In today's video, we will look at the difference between factors of safety and design factors, a topic where consensus is not one of the main concepts. Depending on who you ask, what textbook you're reading, what website you browse, or what company you work for, the concept of design factor will vary vastly. For some companies, the design factor is something you look up depending on the product you're working on. Most textbooks offer a procedure to calculate a starting design factor value, but it's not consistent between books. Some online resources even state that the design factor is the inverse of the factor of safety, which means that their design factors have values of zero to one. It is true that if you work for a well-established company, they will most likely follow some regulatory codes or policies, depending on the product they're working on. Others have enough experience in a specific field to know what to shoot for when designing different components or products. However, there are ways to obtain an initial value for your design factor that will probably come in handy when designing a new product at a big company, designing a new idea at a startup company, and most definitely when you're trying to find a reasonable final factor of safety for the different elements you'll design in the following two mech design courses. The factor of safety is usually the ratio between the strength and the maximum stress that the intended load and overall operation generates. Accounting for uncertainty is, for that reason, the key element when it comes to calculating the design factor. Uncertainty affects everything, from the properties of your material, the variability of the loads, the math models you're using, to even the dimensions of your components, specifically the tolerances of the components you buy or machine yourself. Let's begin with a very simple example where we can see how the uncertainty of different properties and dimensions affect my design factor. The uncertainty of the different variables that will affect my design factor arise from different phenomena. For example, the strength of the material might vary because of the composition of the material, the specific processing of the material, or even residual stresses from poor manufacturing. When we design a structural component, we are thinking of how that component is gonna be used. But we have to think of the worst case scenario where it's misused. We'll cover tolerances in much more detail later, but you can imagine that depending on the machining process that you use, the final intended dimensions might not be what you were shooting for. So let's assume that this rod is made of a brittle material and it's under compression by load P. I have a 10% uncertainty on the ultimate compressive strength of the material. There's a 5% uncertainty on the load. And due to the machining that I used to get that rod down to the radius R, I have a 2% uncertainty on it. Both the design factor and the factor of safety are defined by the ratio between the strength and the stress. And specifically for the design factor, we call these nominal. In this simple compression example, my normal stress would be equal to load over area from axial loading. To find the design factor, I'm gonna consider the worst case scenario where my stress is maximum and my strength is minimum. My maximum normal stress occurs when the load is highest and the cross-section area is lowest, which is equal to 1.05 over 0.98 squared times the nominal stress. If I consider the worst case scenario for the strength of the material, I would find that the ultimate compressive strength is 10% less than I expected it to be. In that worst case scenario, my maximum stress cannot be higher than the minimum strength or else the component will fail. From this expression, I can solve for the nominal strength over the nominal stress, which is exactly what I defined as design factor. Let's take a look at another example where I have a wrench that is subjected to a load P and I'm interested in calculating the stress inside the handle where the cross section area is lowest. I know that the handle is long enough for the transverse shear stress to be negligible, and therefore the maximum stress will be the normal stress from bending. The moment is negative PL that cancels out with the negative sign. The distance from the neutral axis to the top is H over 2, and the second moment of area for a rectangular cross section is 1 over 12 base times height cubed. And due to the change of cross section area at that point, I'm considering a stress concentration factor KT. I know that the maximum stress will occur when that load is farthest from the stress point and when both dimensions of the cross-section area H and T are lowest. If the yield strength has an uncertainty of 5%, I know that I should compare this maximum stress to the worst case scenario strength, which is the minimum. Since my design factor is the nominal strength over the nominal stress, 
I find that it has a value of 1.66. Notice that I was able to find a design factor without knowing the actual values of my variables, only their uncertainty. The reason the design factor and the factor of safety differ is because once I have the design factor value, I can do actual calculations and make design decisions, such as selecting a material or solving for a dimension of a structural component. But what if the strength I'm solving for yields a value that no material I can use has? I may find a material that has a strength that is close to what I want, but more often than not, my selection is limited. Let's go back to the simple example from before, this time knowing that the ultimate compressive strength is 48 KSI and that the load is 3 kips. Additionally, let's suppose that from my design factor calculations, I found a design factor of 2. I would like to know then the diameter of my rod, assuming that it comes in multiples of 1 8 of an inch. Since I know that the design factor is equal to the strength over the stress, I can solve for that diameter and find out that it's 0.4 inches. The closest option would be 3 eighths of an inch. But if I choose that diameter, my factor of safety would be lower than the design factor of 2. And therefore, I have to select a diameter of 0.5 inches. With this value, I can go back and calculate the factor of safety, which like we said at the beginning of this video, is usually a ratio between the strength and the maximum stress for the intended load and the actual setup that I build. Of course, the restriction of multiples of 1 8 of an inch for the diameter of the rod are very strict, but it serves as an example to show how the original design factor was calculated only with uncertainty in mind, and the final factor of safety, after making my design selections, can sometimes be very different, and in all cases, the factor of safety must be higher than the design factor. In our next video, we'll talk about tolerances and some of the basic math that goes behind calculating uncertainty for some of the variables, like material properties and operation loads. Thanks for watching.